A brutal pit bull attack in Pittsfield. The serious injuries to a little boy and why his mom says it will be a long road to recovery. Plus, your personal information online for pharmacists and doctors to see, but is it a privacy issue? We'll tell you why the bill is gaining support. And up for auction. These lavish homes were once occupied by state prison superintendents, but this perk is ending because you paid for it. Good evening. I'm Greg Floyd. And I'm Dory Marlin. We begin here tonight with a little boy's battle against two ferocious pit bulls as his mother stood by, helpless to stop them. Well, tonight he is now facing a long road to recovery, but the dog's owners are not yet facing charges. Our Casada Edwards spoke with the boy's family tonight and has their emotional story. Around 930 Monday night, Cheryl Powers walked into a disturbing scene at 73 Edward Avenue in Pittsfield, her grandson covered in blood. When I get in there, there's blood all over him. And, you know, she's the mother. She went through everything trying to save her son. It should have never happened. The victim, Powers' nine-year-old grandson, Perrin Patel. The attackers, at least two pit bulls. She was opening up the door to get into the apartment, and the dogs came down the stairs, pinned them against the door, and then dragged them out onto the lawn. They dragged them down the stairs of our back porch. Um, they brought them into the grass and just, you know, just kind of were like mouthing on him. Um, he just kept screaming, you know, mommy help me, you know, they're hurting me out. Patel received over 30 puncture wounds to his face and head and part of his scalp was torn off before being transported to Berkshire Medical Center. Neighbors say this isn't the first time that these dogs have attacked. Patel's grandfather says the owners are to blame. According to the, to the neighbors, he killed uh, uh, a cat, two cats. Uh, he attacked it years ago. He attacked it, uh, a woman, all right, and could have, they shot the dog at that time, and it was all him. I mean, he's, he's crazy. The dog's owners are Adam Pollock and Lori Road, both 42 years old. An investigation into the incident is now underway. All three dogs are being held at a local animal shelter. Patel is out of the hospital. Tuesday night, family members were moving the Patels out of that building. In Pittsfield, Casada Edwards, CBS 6 News. All right, the weather making big news tonight. A lot of rain out there to talk about. Here's the man, our meteorologist Chris Gloninger, standing by with your first look at the forecast. Chris. Hey, Greg, the heaviest rain has now shifted into western New England, and I think tomorrow morning the drive into work should be dry in many areas. The last the showers on their way out, 67 degrees. There may be some patchy valley fog early on that quickly burns off. And with that drying trend through the noon hour, 68 degrees heading to a high of 74, it should be a rather pleasant afternoon, and that will pave the way for a gorgeous six to seven days of weather ahead of us with temperatures going up into the 80s and low 90s. I'll let you know when that all happens coming up in your complete CBS 6 Instant Doppler forecast. Dory? We'll see you in a few. Thanks, Chris. A Schenectady man is headed to prison for 25 years for arson. Eric Launder sentenced earlier today. He was convicted of setting fire to an apartment on J Street in Schenectady last May. Nobody was injured. Police say that he poured flammable liquid on the doorway and then disabled a surveillance camera to conceal the crime. The district attorney says that this ruling sends a clear message that arson is serious and can warrant severe punishment, even if nobody is hurt. A former Albany police officer will find himself on the other side of the jail cell for at least a year. Robert Schunk was sentenced today in Half Moon Town Court. He was convicted of criminal mischief stemming from a domestic dispute back in 2010. Schunk hit his former girlfriend in the head with a gun and threw her down a flight of stairs. He was fired from the Albany police force for a separate incident. A Troy teen is in jail tonight for a shooting that happened last month, and now 18-year-old Daquan Jones is facing an attempted murder charge. Police say Jones walked up to a group of people on 6th Avenue in the city and fired his gun. One man in that group was shot in the arm. Police say the shooting happened after a dispute over a dice game. Jones pleaded not guilty this morning in court. Meantime, a 26-year veteran of the Troy Police Department charged with Internet sex crimes is now retiring from the force. Troy Police Sergeant Patrick Rosney was arrested earlier this month in a, steam, a sting that involved New York City police. Investigators say that Rosney spoke inappropriately to someone he thought was a 14-year-old girl. Turns out it was an undercover detective with the New York Police Department. Rosney could face up to four years in prison if convicted. 
Well, first, it's state cars. Now, state houses are going on the auction block. Just over a year after our report on the lavish homes that some state prison superintendents have been living in at very low cost, often well under $1,000 a month, the first of those homes is being put up for sale in Auburn, New York. It is a beautiful home, the childhood home of John Foster Dulles, and now the state is selling it. The last tenant, the superintendent of Auburn Correctional Facility. Known as the Warden's House, it's 8,800 square feet, eight bedrooms, six full baths, sunroom and rec room, and there is a detached carriage barn. What made you decide it was time to get the superintendents out of those houses? Well, you know, it's really been more of an evolutionary process over the years. The way the system is now in the, in, in the modern era, there's less of a need necessarily for a superintendent to live, let's say, either right next to the facility in some of these instances or within a mile of the facility where some of these other residences are located. Also up for sale in Auburn, this house used by a deputy prison superintendent. It's a more modest three-bedroom home, but it does have a fireplace, hardwood floors, and a flagstone terrace. In 2010, 13 superintendents lived in these state-owned homes, many of them local show places. Now it's down to four. The governor has made it clear to all the state agencies uh, when he came into office that he wanted to see a greater uh, emphasis on efficiency and, and consolidation of resources if, if possible and, and trying to really cut costs. And we've done that. This stately house at Attica is still home to the prison superintendent there. Superintendents at Fishkill, Elmira and Mohawk also still live in state-owned homes. And the corrections commissioner lives in this attractive state-owned house in Albany. He pays $634 a month in rent. Although as of last month, he did start paying his own utilities. Is the commissioner's house on the table too? Might that go at some point? All the, all the properties are on the table. We've not ruled anything out. And, and uh, you know, the commissioner does live there when he's here uh, performing his functions as, as commissioner of the department. But, but we're not ruling out any uh, residential property in our portfolio. State Senator Jeff Klein has been a vocal critic of the state prison housing perks. Superintendents get paid a very good salary uh, and they should be required to rent their own homes or uh, buy their own homes. So you're glad to see this first auction getting underway? Very glad. Uh, hopefully there'll be many, many more auctions generating more and more money for the state of New York. Now, of course, the prison superintendents still get one very nice perk that I have told you about before. They all have their own state car. We are still waiting for the inspector general's office to release a report on its investigation into those prison superintendents' cars. Now, as for what the superintendents' homes might go for if and when the rest are sold, well, most are fairly close to the prison, so location could be a big factor. The opening bid for the Grand Auburn House on a beautiful street, only $125,000. You can find the Auburn auctions, by the way, at nysstore.com. And don't forget, if you have a story about possible government waste, let me know about it by emailing me at youpaidforit at cbs6albany.com.